everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. On May 6 of 2021, this year, somebody posted a very interesting question on a mailing list on Groups.io called um, H390, H390 MVS, as you can see here. And the question reads as following, I'm running MVS 3.8J, which is our beloved MVS that I'm running here in this terminal. And um, my aim is to learn how to create a starter task. A starter task on MVS for uh, people who don't know, it's kind of like a daemon on Unix. Uh, it's a task or a program that starts and keeps running until it is stopped or something happens. So uh, it's not a program that does something, executes and stops, it keeps running. And, and so um, this person, Jim Silvino, wanted to know, uh, wanted to learn more about it, which is a uh, which of course is interesting and I wrote a small assembly program to display the time to the master console every minute so he wanted to write a little program in some kind of language could be any language uh, to write to the console and um, so I put the load module basically the binary in sys2 linklib which is an authorized uh, library and then he created a JCL procedure which he put in sys2 proglib so that he can start it from the console. Um, and so he can start it now with a start clock STC, start the task. But of course I can't stop it without issuing a cancel um, because uh, how do you communicate with the program inside that it's time to stop? That's his question. What I'd like to know is to be able to issue a stop command so that his program will intercept it to enable it to end gracefully. I tried looking through OSVS2 MVS supervisor services and macros uh, version uh, release 3.7 of September 1983, but I just can't find the macros that he needs to use. So very interesting question. Uh, he has a program that he starts doing something, and then how do you communicate with the with the program so that the program knows when it is time to stop? And so a lot of people uh, answered, um, and so one answer came from Mike Schwab well known in the uh, mainframe community, he says you could use the um, right to operator with reply. And so, yes, there is, a there is a way, there's a macro which allows you to write to the console and wait for a reply. Of course, um, the problem with that is that uh, then you have an outstanding reply in the console and operators don't like when they have too many outstanding replies in the console because they tend to stack up. Also, they use buffers. Um, so um, here, Wally McLaughlin, uh, who is well known for having written an ISPF uh, for MVS 3.8, which will be part of the update nine coming up at some point in the future. I really don't know when, when update nine is gonna come out. We're still running on update eight here, as you can see. Um, he points out to this manual, which also the original person uh, had uh, referred to, and I have it here. And so he says, go to page 75. Let's see what page 75 says. Um, so, well, apparently that's not what we not related to what we want to know. So, um, yeah, so he's, he's referring to the uh, right to operate it with reply service. Then, um, of course, um, La Lady Hannes, uh, well known for having written the, um, the replacement for the X edit uh, editor for BM370. Uh, well known also in the community he said that you know uh, he you want to use the stop clock stc command this involves two macros extract and queue edit uh, so these two macros together will uh, operate on something called cib which is a communication um, uh, control block so that this is where your the commands passed to the task will be stored um, and uh, this macro is documented in this in this document. And then we have the amazing, simply amazing uh, uh, Bob Polmunter, who's uh, well known on my channel because he's written the network job entry 
subsystem for MVS 3.8, which I'm using here on my MVS, of course, running in the cloud, and many other amazing things such as uh, improvements to VTAM and many, many other simply amazing things that Bob has written. I'm, I'm uh, lucky enough to call myself a, a friend of Bob and I communicate with him, I would say, at least two, three times a week. Anyway, so he says this, you specifically asked to be able to issue a stop command. The post, the post just prior to mine suggests using uh, a right to operate with reply. However, that of course leaves an outstanding reply, just as I just said before, on the console all the time. So here are the details how to get stop command usage and set it up. I also refer you to this document, System Programming Library Supervisor, page five, operating communication with the program program. Problem program in IBM language means just an application. <laughs> they call applications problem program. And let's go see what he's referring to. Okay, my computer here. So it's low because it's also recording. Okay, operator communication with a problem program. That's exactly what Bob here is referring to. And what it says here is that, let's take this and make it a little bit larger. So I'll make it larger for you, so hopefully you can see that. Um, the operator can pass information to a program by issuing the stop or modify command. So um, an extract macro instruction is, used, is issued to obtain a pointer to the communication event control buffer uh, or block and the pointer to the first command input buffer CIB on the on the CIB chain for the task. So a task can have several CIBs or every time that an operator issues a command to a task, a new CIB or command issued input buffer will be created. And so of course there can be a chain of those. And, um, and so with the extract macro, the program, um, if it's written this way, can then go and get a pointer to the first um, uh, CIB in the chain of all the CIB. So um, of course that means that the problem program or the application would have to go and check if there's any other CIBs in the chain. Um, so an ECB or an event control block is posted whenever a stop or modify command is issued. So that's the kind of way to, what it's saying here is that the the application can just wait for an ECB. An ECB is just an event, kind of a, kind of like almost like a signal on Unix. And so, if you wait for a signal and now and then go check for, um, for any signal coming in, at some point using the extract macro, you will be able to get the pointer to the first CIB. Most of the time, of course, there's only going to be one CIB, but if they come in rap rapid succession, there could be more than one. So this is how you extract, um, you get to the to the command that was issued. Um, and then the CIB contains information specified in the stop and modify command. So inside the CIB, you will get things like the TSR terminal ID and other command, including the command itself. So that's what um, Bob here is referring to. And I thought that in this video, we're gonna uh, write a program to implement what Bob is uh, talking about here. So, so he says that you wait for an event to happen with the, with the command input buffer. Um, so when the operator issues a command, a stop command, you, we will be getting the event inside our program. If you're waiting with the wait in macro uh, on that ECB, then we will get control as soon as we get the command. Then we look at it, we look inside the CIB to determine if it was a stop or a modify. Uh, because the payload is going to be inside this, uh, the control, the, the command input buffer. And uh, after looking at each CIB, if you have a chain of those, you toss it away by issuing a QEdit macro to tell the system to discard it. This clears the, the, uh, the command input buffer so that a new stop or modify can be issued. So that looks pretty simple. And he says here specifically that um, he, in his uh, network job entry uh, subsystem that he wrote for MVS 3.8, which we use uh, extensively on HNet, our uh, world uh, network of, uh, of mainframes connected to each other, IBM mainframes, um, 
control data mainframes, VAC systems. We have um, a worldwide network of those, and I've talked about it at length in this channel. So he uses this exact method to be able to communicate with his own subsystem. So, um, so that's it. Then uh, here, Rene, Professor René Ferland, who's uh, posted several videos here on this channel, he refers to something else, which is also interesting. He says that, why can we not define the program that this person wants to run as a subsystem? A subsystem is an interface in MVS and ZOS, of course, um, for applications that run uh, independently and, um, and, um, and, and, and they keep on running like demons. And you can actually uh, uh, define a control character, character such as we have dollar for Jess and um, and uh, minus, for instance, for DB2, so we can communicate with it. And you can define that in the um, subsystem vector table, but we won't go into that here today. And of course, um, you know, you don't need to set up a whole subsystem for that. We can just um, do it the way that Bob is. Um, describing it. So that's what we're going to go and look at it again. Now here comes another in interesting question from the original poster. By studying your code and by looking at uh, Tommy Sprinkle's amazing uh, website, which we're going to look at here, console communication, um, he says that uh, I was able to talk to he. So he implemented basically what what um, Tommy Sprinkle says here, which is the extract, of course, macro to look at the uh, command input buffer. However, it says that, but that was using the wait macro and that really want to do some other processing. So he says, if I have to wait on something, when do I get to process anything, right? So Bob answers here something which is very interesting. And she says that it, rather than just always running inside a loop, which of course will use a lot of, process, of CPU, you should uh, have independent tasks or starter tasks run um, event driven so uh, which means you only need to wait when your program has nothing to do if you wish to do other processes you can indeed check the ACB um, with the TM instruction and take action if you need to keep running so um, so by checking this bit or a pair of checking is never a good idea because um, so if, if you just go and do processing and then all the time go back and pull for an ECB, an event control block, then you're going to be using a lot of uh, processing. So instead you should use a wait and wake up when something needs to happen. And that's kind of the event driven programming that I was just saying. So you should, uh, you should always uh, create events such as uh, use a timer, set up a timer, because remember the original poster here wanted to write to the console every minute. So Bob here is saying that you just set up a timer and, and then wait so that the starter task doesn't use too many CPU cycles, it just always waits on something, either on the timer to expire or for a communication input buffer uh, to appear through the event control block. So I hope this all makes sense and let's go look at some code on how to get this to work. Let's make the tunnel a little bit bigger for you. So, so what we're going to do here, we're going to write a JCL that starts a program that keeps running indefinitely. And then we'll look at the console to see how to um, communicate with the program. So of course we need uh, the JCL around it. So uh, and so we're gonna see here uh, what we got. So I'm gonna be running this as uh, Herc01, and I want this uh, let's say to go to um, to the spool, not to my printer. And only if uh, I'm going to put some conditional here, so that I don't execute it if there is compiling uh, assembly errors. And then we run our uh, normal assembler FX uh, compile and go procedure, and we use the AmoGen uh, uh, before we use the macro, the installate in installation original Mac library, so that we have the AmoGen and the MacLib. And now we can start to um, use our program now. For the program, actually, there is a, an example at the on the IBM website 
Um, where is it? Here. So actually on the IBM website, if you search for communicating with the program extract and qedit, there is actually a source code in here that implements that. So I'm just simply going to take that and uh, put it in and then look at it line by line what's happening. So let's get started. Let's make a little bit of space here for a few lines of code. Okay, so I'm just pointing out here that this is um, this website here. We can put this, make it a little bit smaller and um, well, we don't really need to look at that. I'd rather look at this. So I'll make this uh, a little bit bigger here. And I guess we can remove this line since I just pointed out where it came from. Then we have our, this is the start of our program. Um, we have the register equate so we can make the code a little bit more readable. We checked some uh, lines in the listing and um, we establish first we save the registers of the caller then we uh, use register 12 um, to or c to uh, establish addressability uh, we uh, store everything in the in the save area we save the uh, pointer to the save area now um, first thing is that we get the communication area address um, from this macro so we load in register 9 the address of the communication area so we can use that afterwards to establish addressability to the communication area where the cib is going to be posted the cib is again is the command input buffer right in other words so far what happens is that we start the program and it looks to see if there's any cib uh, that needs uh, to be cleared it, you know when the program starts there shouldn't no operator has to have the opportunity to to uh, communicate with the task yet because it's it's of course way too fast so that's why we first uh, see if there's any uh, CIB if there is not then uh, now comes a point where we just wait so okay so here's the wait macro which means that we now uh, start the task and we just wait we have nothing else to do right um, because we wrote this we're writing this task to be event driven we only do stuff when we have work um, uh, ready for us so we issue here a macro called wait which is uh, part of the MBS macros and we wait on um, on an event control block so uh, at this point the task just stops and is not using any CPU resources at all and it's waiting for something to be posted the moment so it's going to be stuck here forever right if the no modify or stop command is going to issued by the operator it's just going to wait here we could also of course um, wait for something else to happen we could also put in the timer to expire or something but this would be the event that will enable this task to continue with the next instruction which is here so the moment a the operator says modify or stop through the console that's when um, we get control back to the program and we get immediately the address as you can see here communication area cib pointer we get the address from the area from the communication area and we store it in register 7 and now we use register 7 uh, for the addressability and first thing is we uh, compare um, the content of what's in the CIB um, with this um, with this string to uh, which is part of the macro we're going to go and see if there is if it's a modify if it's not a modify then uh, we free the uh, the communication input buffer immediately so that other commands can be put in if it uh, was a modify we go process the command so the modifier will enable the operator to put in any kind of command which we now we can receive and the command is not an MBS command it's just a command that is relevant to this program it could be Mickey Mouse or something so therefore if it's not a modify uh, what do we do let's scroll down a little bit so then we need to have the code to process the case when it's not a modify um, so because there's only modify and stop so if it's not a modify 
um, we need to check if it's a stop, right? So if it's no modify, first of all, we immediately free the CIB so the other CIBs can be received. And then we check if it's a stop. Uh, if it's a stop, a branch on equal, then we go and process the stop. Um, if it's not a stop and not a modify, wait for another modify. So we go back to wait uh, to this point here. Okay, so it's either modify and stop. There's a little bit of error checking. If it's either, if it's neither one, then we go back and do another wait because there's nothing else for us to do, right? In the case that it is actually a stop, because we're checking here, comparing um, this character to see if it is a stop command. If we need to stop, then we need to go and process this. So uh, let's go scroll down a little bit. Okay, so now we can look at it from here on and say, if it is a stop, so it's not a modify, so therefore it should be a stop, but we're just making sure here. If it is a stop, then we say go to exit routine. And so in the exit routine, we land here, um, and, and supposedly we're now supposed to quit. Uh, and if it's not a stop, then we go back to waiting. So that's kind of the, the flow of the program. Now, uh, some subsystems, some um, applications that run on the mainframe, you just to make sure you don't stop something that is very very busy such as kicks or others you need to issue the stop twice the command the, the operator needs to issue the stop twice and so here we could actually do that so now we could say okay we we have a simple counter binary counter in a register or something or i don't know into some kind of variable and say okay i've been called now to stop once um but since this is the first time i go back to uh wait and uh, only once uh, I get the second stop, I actually really exit, just to make sure the operator didn't put it by mistake. Some applications go even further and say that after a minute or so, uh, the, even the first counter of the stop is cleared and the operator would have to stop again to try to stop the program. And remember, um, as we see here in this documentation, there's really just a start, stop and modify. There's no other way to communicate with a, with a program from the console. So here we just say bye bye, um, you know, uh, leaving now. Okay, and uh, this is the end of the program. So let's look at it again. What happens is we start the program, we clear um, all the CIBs, we uh, we get the address of the communication area, and uh, we clear any CIBs that were that have been there in case there were any, usually there shouldn't be. Then we wait for something to happen, and uh, this will be the, the operator to uh, write to us. Um, if we never get anything from the operator, then this task is just gonna stay there forever. But if the operator says stop or modify, then we land here at this instruction. We get the address of the communication input buffer. Um, if it is, we compare uh, com uh, compare immediate if it's modify. If it is, uh, if it's not uh, modify, then we jump here. Um, and if it's not um, uh, modified, then it must be stop. If it is stop, then we land here and we exit. All right. So, of course, the question is. What if it was a modify command, right? Uh, if we've been following here, we have really two options. It was a modify. So then if it was a modify, then we should go and do whatever, handle the command that was given to us. Modify is just a way for the operator to pass any kind of command that is only understandable to this application, um, to the application itself. So it's either a modify or it's a stop. If it's stop, we go and leave. If it is a modify, um, then what do we do? So we need to jump to this do the CIB. If it was a modify, go process the command. So where do we handle this? So that's what we're gonna do now. What's happening here? So first of all, we have the literal pool, we put it here. Why do we put it here? Because um, in MVS, uh, everything has to fit within uh, 4096 bytes. Why is, why is that? Because that's a page, a virtual page. And so 
um, what we're doing here in the IBM example program to that remember that's where we're taking this from uh, where is it we're taking this from here they're putting it here because they want the save area to be within one page of virtual memory so we always have access to the save area so sometimes um, you you want to be sure that you put the save area as close as possible to the end um, of the program but certainly within a virtual memory page and um, so now we use QEdit to free the CIB, the communication input buffer. We'll also, the QEdit will also at the same time clear the ECB. So that's very handy because once we receive what's happening is now we're entering, we said here, uh, it was a modified process the command. First thing what we need to do is uh, clear the ECB and the CIB so that the next event can immediately be posted to us again. Um, so uh, we enter here the do CIEB. We get the length of the command. So it could be, I think, up to about uh, 140 characters, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember the exact one. I'm sure somebody will correct me. But there is a limit. Um, and, um, and then we extract um, the, the content of the message. So, um, and, and we write also, we could also remove this here and we could, uh, we could confirm to the operator that we did receive the, um, the modify so that we could control that it's actually been done. And, and so now we have in message 1A, we have the content of whatever the operator put in the modify command. So we could do whatever we want to do at this point. So now we would actually process the command. So we, we would probably have a table of commands that we can understand, such as, uh, I don't know, uh, show time of day or, um, I don't know, uh, request a certain tape. Anything that we want to do, we would put in here. So uh, process the command. Issued. So here we would have something like a select in Rex or in any high level programming language. Say if it's this command, do this, if it's this command. So this is real, like where the real application code would go in. But um, we don't have anything um, that, that we want to do it because we're just looking at example right now. So what do we do next? So now we need just to have the definition of the uh, variables and that we need to run this program. There's not many. We use the message tab and the message for the um, to display to display uh, what we want to show in the WTO that we have here. Where's the WTO here? So here we're showing output from modify, and then we have we're moving the payload of the command into this buffer here. So uh, we need to define those. Um, this is uh, needed high bit on to turn the high order bit on for the message, which we uh, need here. And then we have um, just some, uh, some uh, uh, other definitions that we need for this part here, right? Where is it here? We also obviously also need some more definitions for the macros that we're using. So that's the, for the ECB uh, list of the weights, the uh, address of the modify stop ECB. All those are needed so that we can actually process our macros. And so that's uh, that's uh, you know a boilerplate. I just take it from um, from this program here. But that's all well understood and um, now we just need the list of the data sections with the macro uh, data areas mapping so where do we get that it's here and that's it so we need this d sections because we're using um, the various 
um, ECB and uh, extract macros. So we need to include, and for the CIB, we need to include that. And I think that's pretty much the end of the program. Now we're going to go again at the end and look at the whole flow of this program, just if uh, to make it uh, easier to understand. But I believe this is basically all of it. And now we kind of need to uh, finish the program. Okay, so that is the full extent of our program. As you can see here, um, this uh, WTO um, has a continuation, so that needs to be on column 72, which it is, so that's fine. So I think that uh, this um, should work fine. Of course, uh, on the IBM website, this is for ZOS 2.1, which uh, we don't have. We have MBS 3.8, but this has not changed in 45 or 50 years, um, actually 55 years. So that this will work exactly the same whether ZOS, MBS. Um, I think it will not work like this on MVT, uh, which is the predecessor of MBS 3.8, but it will, I'm quite sure, it will work just fine on MBS 3.8. So now that we want to go and run this program, obviously we need to have access to the console, uh, which I have here. So this is my MBS system that I'm connected to here. So this is this this TSO session is running on this machine. And so we can try to run this now. Let's save it. And I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I have not run this yet. Okay, so we see here Herc 01x started. And if we look now here, we see it here running. It's just there. It's in the go phase, so this means it compiled fine. Uh, if we go and look, start 3.8, should see here, yes. So here we have all the, all the um, status of all and which is basically the same thing that we see here in the console this is the operating console right just just to be sh clear that we uh, all understand this and and this has been running now for a while We're running for two weeks so uh, we have the syslog um, this is all standard part of MBS 3.8 TK4 minus update 8 and we have here our own task, which is also still executing. XAQ means executing. And um, and here is our step, pick one, go. And let's see what it says here. It says that it assembled fine, it compiled without any issues. Let's go look at the assembly. And this is the output of the program that is still running, right? And we, it will keep on running forever if you don't issue a modify command. So it's here, no, no problems whatsoever. We see that um, this is using um, C as the, um, as the register for the uh, relative addressing. So it always appends the, the, uh, the addressability that we established here is put into register 12, which is C, and it's always uh, at the beginning of every address, of every relative address. And it just uh, compiled all that just fine. The program is only 190 hex long, and it was loaded in this run at, uh, at this address. So um, no uh, assemblies, no statements flagged in this assembly, okay? So how do we now communicate with this program. We can do this. F which means modify. As you know we have start means is S is stands for start. 
I hope you can all see this fine. P stands for stop. You can also just write stop. And F is for modify. So if we say now X, what happens is that we just pass the string hello to the program. Now our program, as we just saw, doesn't really know how, you know, it receives this. Right? And it you know we have at this point So we would have here, as I mentioned before, a select kind of um, a structure where we would process. So for, we could say things like, I don't know, uh, F, F01, X um, time, right? And then, and then if we issue the time command, then here we would at this point here in the program in the source code, we would have the processing for time for the time command because we see it's that, that we got the time uh, command and we could go and issue and show the time of the day on the console or whatever we want to do but it would be here that we would handle the, the content of the modify command and um, and if not then the, other, the only other thing that we can do is to say stop stop herc 01x right because it's running right now so if we issue that it says bye bye leaving now where do we get this from that's exactly the spot right bye bye leaving now um, it reloads the um, the set from the save area of the registers restores the registers and then here um, subtract register 1515 why is that um, well there's many ways to clear register 15 register 15 needs to be zero so that it will show return code zero um, it just so happens that the SR instruction is the fastest of all the possible ways on the S360 and S370 to clear a register and then set it to zero is SR. So we, if whatever is the content of, uh, in register 15, we subtract it from that from that register. So effectively, if there's, I don't know, if the value is 100 in binary, we subtract 100 in binary, we get down to zero. So that's the fastest way to clear the register in assembly. And that's why you see this often, and I also do it myself and in my programs. That's how I clear registers. I just subtract them from, from themselves. And, uh, and then we exit. Here's the save area. And, um, and so that's how this program runs. Now, if we want to be able to launch this program from here, obviously that's not going to work because that's not in the, in the, in the proclib. Right. In the procedure library, we would have to put in this whole this program without the job card. If we put it here, this whole program without just from here on, in the procedure library sys2.proclib, then we could also launch it from here. But right now it's not there, so we just have to launch it from TSO. But it doesn't matter. You can call it here uh, PCB. Right. So if we start this again now, oh, sorry, submit job 598 we should see now display all jobs we should see here now herc one ECB it's uh, it's at the go step of the of this procedure and it's just waiting there and again we can now say herc01 uh, X mm, something and now this part here will take it output from modify as you can see here that's this first line and then where's this other line coming from well it's coming from here okay um, because we have message 1a is uh, message sorry message 1 is this thing here so we have an empty string and within this empty string that we that I just highlighted here with my mouse, the content of what we put in, in the F modify command, this part here is going to be put into this string into this empty space, and that's uh, that's what we're doing here in this program. So that's a very simple way 
for a starter task to receive communication from the operator so we can start and stop it as I mentioned uh, very important subsystems will sometimes require the stop command to be issued twice and so they will say something like okay I got the first stop uh, second stop if you're really really sure and then we would have a counter here that, uh, that, that counts the stops in this step here like exit routine we could have like a counting twice just to be extra sure that the, com the operator really wants to shut it down um, and uh, now this also kind of uh, points us to the question why is there some applications uh, or subsystems such as JS2 which sometimes are very hard to shut down well and now we can see in the source code that sometimes there are situations where you, you don't easily get to this routine to shut down because um, the way that the program is written if certain conditions and races happen you may actually never reach the source code and if you reach the source code the stop command is never going to be processed because the stop command doesn't just um, just doesn't kill the application it sends the stop command to the application the application needs to be able to get it and do all the graceful shutdown that it needs to do and if it's not able to do the graceful shutdown it may not come down we see this often with Jest 2 and um, and so that's why if we start this program the only way to really shut it down for sure if you cannot reach if you cannot talk to the application would be to say cancel 501 x however when you cancel like this what happens let's go check this was job 599 you'll see you have an event s222 which is going to be registered by all the uh, mainframe uh, systems that make sure that everything is running fine will say oh there was an event so now would somebody would have to go and inspect sometimes a human or some kind of application would have to see why was there an event and so the cancel is not the proper way to shut down applications because it will be registered in all kind of places that there was an abnormal end somewhere and that's why uh, issuing uh, a stop is much better but to be able to process the stop you need to have uh, everything in place in the program and so this is a very good template uh, boilerplate to show how to uh, process uh, commands from the operator uh, I'm going to be put this program in the description uh, below this video there's a link to the to my github repository where I'm going to be storing this exact program here but again, just so uh, we go through it and understand exactly what's happening one more time, we have we, we have the registry equates, we establish um, addressability here, we save the um, we save the registers of the callers in the save area, then uh, we obtain the address of the communication input buffer using the extract command, we establish addressability to the communication area. Uh, we clear um, the we clear the first CIB on entry because there shouldn't be any, just to be sure there's no waiting CIB. And then we go into wait. We wait for an event to happen. Uh, an event an event that's gonna that is gonna wake us up is gonna be a modify or stop command. Uh, the moment we get out of the we get posted on an event, we check if it's a modify. If it is a modify, we'll go handle the modify command. We'll look into it later. If it's not a modify, then it must be hopefully a stop um, command. If it is a stop, we will check here again. If it is a stop indeed, we go process the stop. As I said, there's several ways we could process the stop, requiring once, twice, or we even require a special uh, password sometimes to put in through, a, through an additional modify command. Then we have the save area always as close as possible to the end of the logical Part of the program so that it still fits within 4096 bytes within one page and then if it is a modify we go handle the modify we extract what was inside the modify command here and uh, and then we uh, show a message right to operator um, with the content of the of the modify command just so that we can be sure that it's working fine we could also just start this out, make this a comment, and then we get uh, just the output of what we wrote in without without uh, saying this on the console. Then we have the constants, which uh, which is in this case um, the holder for the buffers for our command and for 
the empty uh, WTO where we're going to fit in the payload and then the various uh, um, uh, uh, variables we need in storage for the handling of the macros and then just the data sections for the macros themselves and then suspend and CCU dump in case we have that. So very very simple program. This enables us to write now any kind of of started task which is again like a daemon on uh, uh, Unix. It is exactly like a daemon on Unix and like a daemon on Unix you would uh, communicate with it with um, with signals and uh, and uh, modify and stop are nothing other than just signals to the program. Again, uh, the full uh, source code is going to be linked to in the description below this video. If you have any questions, uh, then I would urge you to either, um, where is it? Go and check either Tommy Sprinkle's amazing website here, where he has lots of here, um, systems programming. So Tommy Sprinkle has lots of um, content about how to write all this stuff. This, um, the link to this uh, document here uh, that is referred to, uh, what is it called again? Let's make it bigger. OSVS2, which is MVS3.8 system programming library. I'm going to link to this in the description below this video as well. The original post, you will have to subscribe to the H390 MVS mailing list. Um, console communication by Tommy Sprinkle and uh, the IBM program as well. I will link to all of this in the description below the video you're watching right now. If you like this video, then I would ask you to please uh, press on the thumbs up button. And, um, and if you haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet, now would be a perfect time to do that. Thank you very much. Goodbye.